Hi, this is Alan Cho. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you the responsibilities of classes in Stardust. This is the inheritance tree. As you can see, the, in, uh, the root node is the Stardust element class. I'll cover most of the classes shown here in this video. The Stardust element class is the superclass of all Stardust elements. It defines some shared properties and methods for all elements. And these properties and methods are mostly for XML serialization and deserialization. Next is the emitter class. This class is for creating, emitting new particles, and removing dead particles. This class uses the initializer class to initialize new particles and uses the action class to update particle properties. It also defines the step method. This is the main loop for Stardust engine, so you can say it is the most important method for the engine. The clock class determines how frequent new particles are created by the getTicks method. The emitter class would, uh, on each emitter class's step method call, it uses the clock's getTicks method to determine how many new particles it should create in this new loop call. Uh, there are already some classes defined in Stardust, including steady clock, impulse clock, random clock, and others. The initializer class is for initializing properties of newly created particles. Since it's only initializing particles when they are created, it only affects each particle's properties only once. The action class is for updating particle properties in each main loop, or you can call it emitter step, so it repeatedly modifies a particle's property. The random class is for generating run dimensional random values, or you can simply call you can simply say it generates random values. It's mostly used by initializers. Remember particles are similar entities with some randomness. And so Stardust usually usually use random classes to create random scales, random rotation values, or random angular velocities. There are already some uh, random subclasses defined, including uniform random and normally distributed random and etc. Alright, so next is the zone and zone 3D classes. Just like the random classes for generating random values, these two classes are for generating 2D and 3D random vectors. The getPoint method of zone and zone 3D classes will return a random point defined in the zone. For example, the rec, uh, rec zone class uh, returns a random point in the rectangular region. All right, and these two classes are mostly used for position and velocity initialization, since position and velocity are 2D in 2D are 2D uh, well 2D or 3D vectors. Alright, uh, the last one is the renderer class. Uh, the aforementioned classes are only for manipulating numeric data in your computer's memory, and the renderer class is for visualizing numerical data to your screen. And it's fully customizable, so you can extend your own renderer to integrate with your preferred rendering engine. Stardust already has some built-in renderers which can work uh, which can work with Flash Player's native 2D engine, Stardust native 3D engine, Zbox, Hypervision 3D, and ND 3D. All right, and so these are the Stardust element classes. Now next is I'm going to go through some value object classes, which are for only uh which are only for storing numerical data and some basic operations. Alright, so here are vector 2D and uh, vector 2D and vector 3D classes. Uh, these are for storing 2D and 3D vector data. As you can see, in vector 2D, it uh, it will store two numerical data that represents the x and y component, and some it also defines some methods for vec 2D vector operation, including dot product, projection, and rotation. This is the same for vector 3D, only that it has an extra component, which is the Z component. It also defines an extra method, because uh, uh, the cross product, because this operation only works for 3D vectors. Here are some other value object classes for simply st for storing vector data, and actually the motion data 2D and motion data 3D are 
light version of Vec 2D and Vec 3D classes. As you can see, they also define some properties for storing X, Y, and Z components, but it doesn't define any methods to to perform vector operation. So this is it is a lighter classes. Uh, th th these are lighter classes to use. On the right side are motion data 4D and motion data 6D. Motion data 2D and 3D only stores 2D and 3D values which can be used as position to represent position or velocity. If you, if you want to represent velocity and position at once, you can use motion data 4D and 6D. And here are some value object pools. Uh, if you are familiar with uh, action script programming, you might know that instantiating new objects are expensive. So the best practice of using value objects is using va value object pools. You can grab object instances, I mean you can grab these value object instances from the pool and recycle them, put them back to the pool for future use. So as you can see these are vector, vector Vec2D pool and Vec3D pool classes which define the, this get method which returns a new instance of Vec2D and also a recycle method for you to recycle to put the object back to the pool. There are also value object pools for motion data 2D, 4D, 3D, and 6D. Alright, so these are the class responsibilities in Stardust.